Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is another podcast. Congratulations, you've made it. <laughs> Number 66. This is the match preview for Leeds United versus Crystal Palace on Monday Night Football. So we've got Gary Neville to look forward to. <laughs> Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, why not uh, write in that subscribe button and then smash the comments section. <laughs> that was right, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Here it is. The following podcast contains some strong language and some very average opinions. Any references to actual people are wildly inaccurate. It's probably best if you don't listen at all. The Roaring Peacock podcast welcome back to the roaring peacock podcast this is the match preview for Leeds united versus crystal palace on monday night uh we've got so much in the show coming up uh we'll look back at the midweek games of each team as well as the previous meeting in november and then we'll move on to uh, the team news and the match preview for Monday, look at the key players and finally make some score predictions. So my name is Adonis. You know me as the Adelites on Twitter and it's a very good hello from me. And representing the Roaring Peacock, our chairman of the board, Wiggy. Good afternoon. And uh, the stranger in our midst, um, the Prince of the Palace. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, it's Ali from South London Fan TV. That's good, yeah. Quite a South London Fan TV. Yeah, good to be on. Thanks for having me. Uh, looking forward to another game against you because I quite enjoyed our last one. I bet you did. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Um, so uh, I guess there's one place to start, which is the most recent games. So uh, Newcastle 1, Palace 2, Ali. Um I'm looking at the stats here, and we've played Newcastle very recently as well, and they played very well against us uh, until until they actually had a shot, and then it seemed to go into the <laughs> stands every time. Um, they've had they had 22 shots against us, they had 21 shots against you, so there seems to be a familiar pattern uh, appearing here. Um, it looks like you didn't deserve to win. Is that a fair statement? No, I think we were the better team against them. Um, we, we we were kind of on a, a, a run of two wins in a row, which is very strange for us. But they're against teams bang out of form like Wolves and Newcastle. So trying not to get too excited. Newcastle weren't that great. But yeah, we played quite well second half. So we are coming into you with a little bit of form. But Newcastle, not really up to much. No, I think on our last podcast, I called them crap. And I think I would carry on that theme in this one. They are crap. I would dispute that they're not playing well. I think they're playing very well. Um, I think they got uh, very unlucky against us. They should have won. If they had anybody who could hit the hit the ball into the goal, which is kind of part of football. <laughs> I, mean, I think they're a bit like us in that, you know, with, they've just got St. Maxim coming back from injury. So he's sort of like their Saha. So without him, they're not really... Or they don't all have a lot of flair, which is what a lot of Newcastle fans are getting annoyed about. So I think if he comes back to fitness, I mean, they are playing better than they were, but that's not really saying much, is it? So Well, you've scored two goals from three shots on target and you've had 38% possession. I don't see how that, I don't see how you've, you can justify that as played well. I mean, I'm only looking at the stats here, to be fair. No, I mean, that's just standard Roy Hudson, though. That's just, um, that's just the way, way Roy plays. Um, you know, I think we weren't, uh, we didn't start very well, but second half we were better. So my expectations aren't high. So, <laughs> um, you know, I, I do think I always felt in the second half, even when we lost Saha to injury, I always felt like we still had control of the game and that we were going to win that one. Um, they just, they didn't really frighten me very much. So, mm, Yeah, they're not a very frightening team. And it's refreshing to see how little optimism you have and enthusiasm for your team because obviously we've just come up and we've won the championship by 10 points and and we've got the best coach uh, that's ever lived and um, we're going definitely going to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> to the Champions League. <laughs> yeah. 
the media don't really pick up on it in the way they pick up with Steve Bruce, but a lot of Palace fans have sort of uh, would like a change of management in the summer when Roy's contract comes to an end. We appreciate what he does. You can't argue with it. The points tally, you know, and looking at the games we've got ahead, you, Burnley, Brighton, Fulham, we could fight to get in the top 10 realistically because, you know, Southampton are having a little bit of a dip. Arsenal, I think, losing as we speak. Um, so you never know, but you can't argue with his points tally, but the football is very, very dull. Uh, if I, I don't know how to describe it to you, really. I mean, I've been to Leeds once, and that was, I did the Otley run, so I don't really remember it very well. Um, <laughs> and I've described being a Palace fan this season as like going on the Otley run, all your mates are drinking, but you're having water at each stop. It's just very, very dull and long, and you kind of just want it to come to an end. We will stay up, but not a lot of fun along the way. And... Um, a lot, half of our players are coming out of contract at the end of the season, which is terrible management, not by Roy, by people above him. It just feels like we're going to have to have a change in the squad. You might Roy's not going to go on forever. It'd probably be the right time to have a change. I don't know. I think he might go on forever. He looks like a Sith Lord or he, maybe he's um, sold his soul to the devil or something. Um, Wiggy... What did you think about Leeds 1, Everton 2? Did we deserve to lose that, that game? No, I think we definitely deserved a point. If not more, I think uh, the second half we dominated, didn't we, against Everton? Um, we really looked like we were going to get something. And we're, when Rafinha scored early doors in the second half, you think that's our time now to kick on and 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 either get a point or, or get three points. And I think we're really unlucky. And I think it's it was the... Uh, the, you know, one of the first times I've walked away from this from a game and thought, how have we not got anything from that game? So I think we were terribly unlucky. Um, but I think we can go into the Palace game with a lot of confidence, having won the previous two and played well against Everton, especially in the second half. Yep, seems that way. Uh, so we had 16 shots against Everton. We had 64% possession. And <clears throat> there was a, a point in that second half, I think it was like 10 minutes to go, where they'd had maybe one shot in the second half and, and, and we'd had so many. Um, yeah, it felt, it felt unlucky and Everton looked a really good team. So speaking of unlucky and frustrating games, Crystal Palace 4 leads 1. <laughs> I mean, Ali, that must have been quite good for you. That was a good game, wasn't it, lads? Um, I think that's probably one of our best games of the season, maybe apart from you probably enjoyed the other one when we beat Man United 3-1 at Old Trafford and Saha got two and showed them what they lost. Um, but it was probably one of our best performances. Also, sort of the game I look back on and think Eze really came alive. He, he scored the free kick and sort of announced himself to the Premier League. So yeah, that was one of our better games, but it kind of worries me for Monday because I feel like Bielsa the way he studies um, teams will have a plan, whereas Roy will just stick with the same system. I think, yeah, I think the, the scoreline was flattering, wasn't it? Because I think you look at the stats, we had plenty of possession. And I think if Bamford, if that offside that obviously was clearly not, uh, that was ruled out by VAR, if that was given, we're back in the game. And I think it changes the complexity of the game. And I think it probably changes the result. But yeah, we uh, we... we we let that one go, and uh, I think in the end it was probably the right result, but not the scoreline, that's what I would say. Disagree with you on that. I do agree with you on the VAR. I hate VAR. I don't know how Mike Riley, general manager referee, is still in a job, but I don't. I saw some Leeds fans on social media. So, like, I think you made too much. So I thought we were the much better team on that day. <laughs> <laughs> Felt very comfortable. I think Roy, actually, to be fair to him, the way that we counterattack sort of exposed exposed <laughs> you the way your defenders go bomb on all the time. But I think Bielsa will have a plan for the next one. I, I, I just don't think it was a final result. I'm not saying that I'm not saying we shouldn't have lost. I don't, I, I don't know when. I, you know, I, I think we probably deserve to lose in the end. I just don't think it was a four, four one. That would be my maybe, would be maybe not four one. But I I mean I did think we were the better team. Quite by to be honest quite a bit on the day if I'm honest um, yeah. but I don't I so, think that will go in your favour for Monday so we've let's go through that game then um, because we see things incredibly differently again Ali um, 
The game uh, started off basically with, with Crystal Palace getting a corner and Scott Dan scoring from it. Um, that's not always going to happen, is it? You're not going to score from, from every corner that you have or you don't, you know, it's not even a ratio of one goal to every three corners. So it's, it's it, essentially you, you've got... You've, Very good in the air. So, um, I mean, he hasn't played a lot this season, but he is good in the air. So uh, won't surprise Palace fans that he scored a goal from a corner. I'm, I'm good in the air, but you still have to get lucky... For- <laughs> you still have to get lucky to score from a corner. Um, so there's a there's a little bit of luck. It's not a, it's not a large amount of luck. We'll get onto that in a second. It's not an enormous amount, but you still have to be lucky to get a goal from a corner. You can have fucking seventeen corners and not score. Um, so that was the twelfth minute, and then I think around the twentieth minute, we scored a legitimate goal, and. When you point to where you want the ball to go <laughs> and your armpit hair is offside... You're not going to see me arguing about that. I'm not going to argue about that. I mean, I hate the VAR. <laughs> uh, I don't know how Mike Riley, who's general manager of the referees and has presided over this, is still on the job. But then ultimately it is the rules. You're not the only team to have had that happen to you. So... There's no, I don't think you need to go all sort of Jurgen Klopp and cry about it. It's happened to lots of teams. Then it was still early in the game for you to go on and and do something. It's the worst decision I've ever seen. And I think then... there's been decisions like that all for the last two seasons. It's happened to us as well. It wasn't that stage of a game where you couldn't have gone on and won the game though. It's still his whole body is off. His his whole body is behind the other player. He's behind the line, and a, a few of his the hairs on his arm were offside. There's no debate about it. It's the worst off. It's the worst decision I've ever seen in my life. And being so bad, there probably is one as bad. But um, I don't disagree with you that it was a ridiculous decision, and a lot of Palace fans agree with you. I just don't really feel it impacted the result on the day. I still think we were the better team. So, so we scored and. And, you know, the difference between one all and two nil uh, is that that makes a big difference psychologically. So we've scored a goal. It's it's been denied. And you kind of feel like, oh, the refs against us, like the world's against us. And because the next time you get a free kick and Eze um, puts it into the top corner, brilliant free kick. But that's never going to happen. That's not going to happen every game, is it? You're not going to score from every free kick. I mean, have you watched Eze play? He's a real talent. It's, you know... Unfortunately, we were in the championship. So, yeah, we had to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure QPR fans will tell you it will happen again. So, um... Not every again, time. I don't know how you... I mean, you're saying that scoring from a corner and scoring a free kick is luck. A lot of teams had a lot of luck in the history of football then. No, uh, they didn't. Because you don't always score from a free kick or a corner. And that's exactly my point. There are far more free kicks and corners taken than goals scored from them. And that's literally the point. So um, then we we get one back. Okay, so it's 2-1. It's 2-1. And then three minutes before halftime, you put in a speculative cross that's probably going nowhere. And Costa slides in to block it. And it goes straight into the goal. And that is one of the freakiest own goals I've ever seen. So you three one up at half time, and all three of them are arguably lucky. Do you not question it? I give you that one. I was very lucky. But do you not question your goalie being beaten on his near post? Not when you're wrong, wrong footed and you're 19 years old, the youngest goalkeeper in Europe. Um, <laughs> in the top flight. Yeah, it was, that one was a lucky goal. But I thought your goalie. Thanks for that. You how generous. You see that? Ali's given us. Uh, Ali said that that <laughs> one's lucky. Thanks, Ali. <laughs> and I will. I will give you something in return because that fourth goal uh, is deserved. It was a. It was not particularly fantastic play by Palace. I thought it. I thought it was. It was basic passing to each other. Um, which should be normal in a football game, but Alioski and Cooper are completely out of position. Cooper's playing him on side, 
Alioski's <laughs> Alioski's taking a trip. <laughs> so I'm never in halfway in. Line. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a defender, is he? Uh, you know. God, no. <sighs> Sorry. Um. So we've rabbited on and butted heads. Um. Wiki, what? What were your thoughts generally on the, on that game? I think you've summed it up. They were lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I, 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 I don't disagree that we got beat. I'm, I'm not saying for one second we um, deserve to win the game or even get anything from it. However, I just do not feel it was a formal game, and I think the scoreline flattered them. Um, and you know, you've you've gone on and, and spoke about it, but I think if the VAR decision doesn't happen and we get to one-one, it's a different game. But Eho, it's hindsight and everything. We got beat, and that's the uh, you know, the, the except game. that judgment of the game. I just don't think you can say a game where you've lost by three goals is is lucky. I think if it was a two one, then you'd have more of a right to be really annoyed about that Bamford goal. And I do give you that that Bamford, I hate VAR decisions, ridiculous. But when you lose by three, you should be looking at yourself more than saying it was lucky. Well, we lost by two, and. <laughs> And and one of one of them one of them was the freakiest own goal you've ever seen. So that's lost by one. And then another two were on a different day. You don't score from a corner, and and then on a different day, Eze shanks that free kick out of the the stadium. And I um, think it's I think it's safe to say we got beat, and we're looking forward to getting some revenge on one. Like I said, yeah. I think the fact that um, that happened, I think Bielsa will come with a different sort of plan to play us and and Roy is very very rigid in in his approach um he will come back with a 442 so i think you, i think i'm i'm fearing monday really because i think Bielsa will come with a different plan I, I, he won't he will <laughs> he will no no it will be won't. it will be exactly the same we will play exactly the same the only thing that is different looking at the lineup is uh, Calvin Phillips will be playing, which I think makes us tick a lot better um, and makes our execution of the plan, which will be the same, much improved. See, certain people in the media have, have made me believe that Bielsa is like this football genius, the the, the biggest innovator ever. So. Ali, Ali, he is. He's a football genius, definitely. But he, he, has, he has one plan and that's it. Okay, I do really like I do really like him. By the way, I really like the the brand of football that that he plays. Um, so yeah, no, but I just think um, I mean, obviously you've got no Saha as well, which is going to go massively in your favour. Yeah, the Bielsa is like the father of modern football in a lot of ways, and he is not innovative in terms of adapting a style for a different opponent. He's innovative in terms of creating the 3313 formation um and influencing you know Poch and Guardiola and, and all of that. Um so just looking at the lineups then from from that 4-1 game. Um so we had Melier, Cooper, Koch, Ailing, Alioski, Strauch in that defensive midfield position, then um Dallas and then Costa Click in the number ten role, Harrison and Bamford. So um, that was very much a patchwork version of our team, and we should be kind of back to full strength at least throughout the um, the, the structure of 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 the, the the spine of the team. And you had Klein, Kuyate, Dan, Van Arnholt. Townsend, Reed, Vald, MacArthur, Eze, Ayu, and Zaha. Um, so let's have a look who we think might be playing on Monday then. So for Leeds, it'll be Ailing, Cooper, Strauch, Alioski, Phillips, Rafinha, Click, Dallas, Harrison, and Bamford. That's looking a lot better, isn't it, Wiggy? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. Look more confident with that. Yeah. And for you guys, um, Ali, is it is it uh, Van Anholt, Cahill? Dan Klein, Milivojevic, Reedvald, um, Townsend on the right, Ayu in the number ten role, Eze on the left, and Batshuayi up front. I think that's uh, yeah, that's what it'll be. I think you might see uh, Kiate come in for either Dan or Cahill. Um, 
but yeah, that's what it will be. I am most a lot of Palace fans want us to switch from the four four two to four two three one. Personally, yeah. with Saha out, I think we should play our biggest hand Eze in his actual position, uh, which QPR fans would say is through the middle. But Roy has shunted him to the left. For me, it's the biggest misuse of a creative player since uh, Sven shunted skulls to the left. But he will. Roy is like your great aunt at Christmas who gets you the same socks every year. He's very predictable. <laughs> like Bielsa, um, sticking to the same formation, he'll stick with a four-four-two. So I think you have Jordan Ayew and Batshuayi up top. Townsend on the right, who just competed for miss of the season in against Newcastle, and then you yeah. have Eze, Eze on the left. So yeah, that's what it will be. I think. Yeah, no, no, I don't think MacArthur will be fit, so I think it'll be Luka Milivojevic and Gyro Riddleworld in in central midfield as well. And that that's kind of where I think. Um, I just feel like if we go with the same formation, I know you're saying Bielsa doesn't change, but I think he'll have a bit of a plan against us. Um, I just That's why I'm... Obviously, the big fear is we don't have Saha without him. The stats sort of show... I think, personally, we've got the players now. To, it's an opportunity for players to step up, but the stats show that without Saha, um, we're pretty much nothing. So, I mean, the other reason why we lost uh, against you is because we we lose in London, don't we, Wiggy? <laughs> we should um, change the name of this podcast to the reasons why we lost the Crystal Palace. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could fill an hour of content with that, definitely. You, you <laughs> could just make a point and I'll just object. It would be great to hear I'm still, I'm still angry about it. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, mate, you proper ho- held on to this, haven't you? <laughs> it's in your heart. So, so, so reason number 342 is we, we never win in London. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I think Ever. we've won twice in London in 26 games or something, and it's really there's no reason for it. And I think in those one of those games, the other team got had a player sent off. So I mean, it's really like it's bizarre. Um, but but since we've we've bought a pitch from Tottenham, now we've brought the London curse back, so you might be in with the chance, you never know. If, if we get beat on Monday, then that's definitely the issue. We need to go down and dig the pitch up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, okay, so let's think about some key battles then, all over the park. Um, obviously, Eze will be up against Luke Ayling. I think, and uh, and Bamford will be up against Cahill and Dan. Um, what about Klein? Klein versus Harrison. Klein's had a really good season, actually. I think he mm-hmm. he's had to get back to fitness, but you can see why he's had the career he's had and why he got the move to to Liverpool. So um, I'm pleased he's playing. He sort of that Joel Ward came in recently for him, but I think it will be Klein. Klein's had just off the back of two really good games. You mentioned Eze. I mean, Eze, I've mentioned Eze on the left, but it isn't like rigid. He will sort of float around. So he might drift to the right. He might drift in the middle. So it might be harder for you to pick him up. And Jordan Ayew is quite flexible in that as well. And that was one of the things I think worked really well for us when we played you is that we were probably one of the most fluid we've been when we played you. Um, but we lose a bit of that fluidity as well with Wilf dropping off. So it will make us a bit more predictable for you to pick players up. Wiggy, your key players? Uh, for for Leeds, yeah, for Leeds. Go on then. <laughs> uh, so I think uh, Rafinha obviously is a real key one for us. He's a flair player. He's playing fantastic. Um, you know, he's playing down the wing but cuts in really well um, and really just open teams up. I think so. He's a real key one for us. I think uh, Jackie Harrison on the other side again. He's having a really solid season. And I think um, he's scoring a few goals and, and got a couple recently. So I think he's a real uh, a real big one for us. I think a miss will be Rodrigo, who um, obviously uh, was starting to play a little better, but he's injured now. So I think it's now time for, uh, for Click having come on um, as a sub against... I can't... I can't what game Le- did he Leicester. come on? Yes. Leicester. Yes, against Leicester. <laughs> I, played, I played really, really well. You know, he dropped off a bit probably against Everton, so I think he's got to put in a big performance on uh, on Monday, or it's it's probably time for us to swap that role again. Right. Okay. So uh, you should have all of the information that you could possibly ever need to make a score prediction. So Ali, I'll explain uh, this. 
Um, so basically, you will make a score prediction. You get one point for guessing the correct uh, result. So if it's a win, draw, or loss, you get two extra points for guessing the exact score line. You get a point for a goal scorer. Um, but to stop you gaming the system and naming every player on both teams, you'll get a minus point for every incorrect goal scorer. So with all that in mind, Ali, uh, what do you think the score will be? Uh, I think, like I said, I think because of the last game, I think Bielsa will work us out without Saha. So I'm sorry to Palace fans. I think it's going to be 3-1 to Leeds. 3-1 Leeds, we like that. And are you predicting a goal scorer? Yeah, well, uh, Patrick Bamford had a spell with us that was the biggest flop probably since Victoria Beckham's solo career. Uh, he got four <laughs> goals in nine apps for us. So he's def- he sco- like even though he got that goal disallowed, he still scored against us, didn't he, in the home game. So he will get a hat-trick and then he will also get an own goal. So it'll be 3-1 to you. Hat-trick for Bamford, own goal for Bamford. Wow. Wow. He'll also get one disallowed because his armpit was offside. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Wiggy? Uh, I think we're going to fall one. I think we're going to return the favour. Uh, I'm quite confident on Monday. I think Bamford mm. will get one. Uh, I think Rafinha will get one. And I think Jack Harrison will get one as well. Quite confident that all our attacking players are going to get in on the act on, the, on Monday night. Good to see us being confident. Yeah, I'm confident. I don't know why. Um, probably come and come and bite me in the bite me in the ass. But normally, um, <laughs> normally you don't get too many teams doing the double over other teams. So there's normally a mix of results, unless you're at the top and the bottom. I think um, I was also interested. In it. How how does it must change your mindset? Because without Saha, I mean, you, if I was an opposition fan, I'd feel, be feeling a lot more confident. Um, so. I'm more confident with Phillips back for us, to be honest, because he, when we don't have him in. Yeah, I think one of, one of our key players, and I missed him off, is Phillips. And if he's ticking and playing well, we generally play better. So I think if he has a really good game, having him back is just a massive boost to start with. But I think to the Zaha point, I, I feel more confident that, because he's not playing, because I think, you know, like when we played the last time I were we played Leicester. If we if you have players that can just run and run and run at us and are really quick, we uh we back off and we're quite scared of them. Um and it plays into the opposition's hands. So him not playing uh is is a big boost for us. Yeah, you mentioned Leicester, that's interesting because they beat you earlier in the season, but then you sort of gone and beaten them a couple of weeks ago, didn't you? So that was sort of in my thinking in that Bielsa I think will learn we're also like a counter attacking team like Leicester, like you said. So I think he he would have learned from it. And yeah, just like Saha's our top scorer of nine. After that is Eze with three. So it's a massive game changer for us, but also for you. So. Also, you know, we didn't have Phillips for those two games. We played Leicester right after we played you you guys. And we didn't have Phillips for those two games. And it and it really showed. The other thing is we're, we're such a form team. You know, we our, our system, Bielsa has said that if he didn't have um humans playing then he'd win every every game and <laughs> and it and it's just because that he's he's the, the system that he's created i mean there's a reason why people call him like a genius and all that um and really if if robots were playing this system um we'd win we would win every game um so it just comes really does come down to like um if we have five or six players that all hit form in that one game, we can beat anybody. We will be less. I mean, that's like a lot of formations, but it, it's just so beautiful and it makes you so passionate that I probably uh, over egg everything. <laughs> well, no, no, but, uh, Donny, you're right. Like, that's what we saw at Leicester, isn't it? We had four or five mm. players, maybe more, playing really, really well. And we deserve, we got what we deserved, which was a result. I think the thing we forget, I'm going into this game, is... Our defence um, at the minute is still a makeshift defence in terms of it's not a settled uh, back four that you would you would pick if everyone was fit, uh, not by any stretch. So I think it, what I'm liking is that he's going to go with Cooper and Stroud now for a period, I think, and hopefully gives them a chance to settle down and form a partnership. 
Um, Ali Oski at left back still scares me half to death because I think he'll go wandering and um, yeah, he's not a left back at all, but he's our left back in here at the minute. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we support him, if you're listening, yeah. Johnny, which you're not. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, we love you. <laughs> Ali, I just wanted to ask you quickly, what have you made of Leeds um, this season? I don't know if you've seen much of us. Yeah, no, I've seen bits and bits and bobs of you. Um, yeah, no, I mean, obviously, I think you're a fresh, breath of fresh air to Premier Show. I guess... Um, like most Palace fans, it would be one we would have looked forward to going to. And I feel immense sympathy for your fan base that you've come up and you you can't go. Um, and I hope hopefully next season you'll, you'll be able to. Because that, like you're saying, being on that wave when you're promoted and, and after you've been, not been in the Premier League for so long, it would have been amazing. So really, really hope you can get get in the in the ground ne- next year. And hopefully I can uh, come and watch... Um, at Ellen Road, because I think that's an away day every fan was looking for. I think you're a very good team. I think um, I'd be interested to see you improve the squad in the summer and see Bielsa work with some even better players, because I think at the moment your calibre of players will hold you back from sort of really pushing on in, in the Premiership. Um, I do think, and I don't. this isn't a criticism of you, and I'd be interested to hear what you think as fans um, or Leeds itself, but I do think a lot of the media overhype you a bit, like... If you're three 0 down, it's like, oh, Bielsa. That's just the way he plays. They'll come back. Whereas if Palace were three 0 down, we'd get slaughtered. So there is a bit of media sort of hype about you, but that's you know that's more poor punditry for me than so. But yeah, looking forward to the game because um, you were fu- you're always fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, for me, <clears throat> it's a case of you know if if you put out anything on social media or whatever, and you get. 90 positive messages um you'll always remember the two assholes that uh, were saying something horrible to you something mean about you and i think that's the same with with us for pundits like there probably are quite a lot of pundits who are being positive about us but we still just focus on karen Cardi and whatever um it was interesting that you said that you feel sympathy for our fan base because as the most hated club in England, um, it's kind of the first time that we've had everybody on our side and it's weird. Yeah, but those who hate you would probably have loved it when they wake up, you're playing Leeds and be hyped to play you. So they're just lying if they're not disappointed that they're playing you this season. It would have been... Mm a big game, particularly for the fans who like to travel away to go back to Ellen Road. So I just hope, I, to be honest, well, obviously just hope all fans are in grounds next season. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much all we've got time for. Um, so let's maybe just uh, have some final thoughts. And firstly from you, Wiggy. Uh, yeah, I think it's time for the players to, uh, to continue the, the form we've seen in recent games. I think it's really important that we get three points uh, on on Monday. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think we're we're, we're both safe, uh, pretty much. I think let's just have a ding dong and go for it. Let's have a, a good open game. But yeah, four on leads. Come on, leads. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, and we've uh, had a bit of argy bargy and debate, but it's hopefully all friends at the end of it. Um, so your final thoughts, please, Ali. No, 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 I've enjoyed it. Um, always good to have a bit of a, an argument. Um, yeah, no, I think, uh, final thoughts, like I said, I think um, I think you'll probably win it based on no wolf. But I do think it's a massive opportunity for players like uh, Eze, Batuayi, Jordan Ayew, our new signing Mateta maybe might come on to, to actually show. So I think we can be a team without Saha. They need to step up and that's what will be interesting for me because they've got a run in games in which they can do that. But I'm not holding holding my breath on that one. I think we'll lose to a lucky corner and a lucky free kick. (laughs) (laughs) That's been quite good. We deserve that. Yeah. (laughs) And, and, and you might, you know what, you might get a a goal ruled out for, for offside. Mate, it's VAR. I uh, probably will. We'll probably both about four goals disallowed for offside, won't they? Um, Yeah. (laughs) If you're listening on, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, let us know in the comments how many uh, how many VAR decisions were worse than that Patrick Bamford one. Now, and your uh, score predictions. And if you are listening on the podcast, um, 
find us on Twitter and get involved in the debate at Peacock's Raw. Um, so it's a very goodbye from me. My name's Adonis, and you know me as at the Adelites on Twitter and at Wiggy1234 has been Wiggy. Um, so it's very goodbye from him. Uh, goodbye, thank you. And uh, firstly, where can people find you, Ali? Uh, Pride of South London fan TV on, on YouTube. Um, yeah, come and check out. I'll do a review of the game. Got a little video analysing Saha's time at your friends, Man United, how we sold him for 10 million and then got him back for 3 million because of their misuse of him. So you might enjoy that one. Um, yeah, Pride of South London fan TV. Man United abusing people. What a surprise. Well, um, <laughs> thanks for that. And it's a very goodbye from Ali. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Come on, Leeds! Come on! 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 (laughs) Most of our stats come from LUFC Stats or LUFC Data on Twitter. A very special thanks to Barney Stewart, Clifford Ewan and Howard Metcalf, Josh Pearson, Laura, Leon and Rob, The Light Show and all our family and friends. So many games to play, don't care what's on your mind.